Okay, now we go to uh, F10.5, which is a composite area, right? So this is a beam, right? This beam, and this is the section, the cross section, T shape, plus shape cross section okay, of the beam. So the question asks you to find what is the moment of inertia about the centroidal x and y axis. Okay, first thing first, please look at this carefully. This is two hundred. This is two hundred fifty two hundred millimeter. Okay, all units are millimeter. This is 150, 50, and 150. Can you locate the centroid? In this case, it is called a symmetrical, symmetrical cross section and area. Cross section. Okay? Which means that this symmetrical about this axis, this y, and then symmetrical about this x axis. Hmm? I hope you understand it. Which means that if you take you take this y axis, you can see that the left and the right are the same, exactly mirrored, just mirrored. Right? And then for this x. Hmm? For this x axis, you see the bottom and the top, they are symmetrical. When they, they are just mirrored, you can just flip the, the bottom part, you become top part, right? Okay? It's not the same, it's symmetrical, which means it's mirrored, right? So, here, actually, you know, you can see directly from these dimensions, you can see directly that the centroid is located in the middle, very middle, like 50 here. 25 25 so it is 25 25 all right like this one 50 so it is 25 25 all right okay the reason is because when we know this is the centroid right and the question uh, asks you to find the more official for the centroid that exists centroid that x and y exists so this is centroid that x exists this centroid that y exists all right so this problem is actually 10.2 which is, uh, sorry, 10.4, which is the moment of inertia for composite areas. Alright, what does it mean by composite areas? Composite areas means that actually here, though actually you see that this is a plus shape, something like that, but actually you can simplify this further to a shape like this. Right? This is shape A, this is shape B, and then this is shape C. Okay? A, this B and C. You may ask me, can I choose this as the first one, this as second one, and this as the third one? Yes, no problem at all. It's just here if I choose like this A, B, and C. So now for this all in A, B, and C, for instance, for A, the central is here, right? For B, the central is in the middle somewhere here. And for C, the central is somewhere in the middle of this, half of this, half of this, right? B, same. Half of this, half of this, right? So A, same. Half of this, half of this, right? So can you see that in this case, if I choose these sections, A, B, and C, instead of the other, the other choice, right? In this case, all the centrals of these areas they lie on the x axis, the same x axis. Okay? So actually here, in this case, to calculate Ix later on, it will be easy. Okay? I mean, by the way, for Iy, you need to, it will not be that easy. Okay? But let's see. So basically, for Ix, please understand this. What is the, what is the shape? The shape is this, right? You have that in, in uh, you have that in the lecture that if you want to find about this axis, okay, and then this is B, this is H, okay, so I X equals to one over twelve B H cubic for this shape, okay, for this rectangular shape. Base height base is the one which is the length, okay, which is uh, per, uh, parallel with the axis that you want to find more of each about, right? So you want to find I X. Okay, so your base is this, which is, okay, take the first one, which is A. This 1 over 12, base 50, alright, H is 200 plus 50 plus 200, which is 200, 400, 450. 450 to the power of 3, okay, 1 over 12, base height, alright. And then this is for A. How about B? 
P okay, for X, it is same. This is the base, this is the height, this is okay. And then this is the centroid on the X axis itself. So 1 over 1 over 12 base. How much is this? 150. Right? B H cubic. H is 50 cubic. It's okay. 1 over 12. B 1 over uh, 150. H is 50 cubic. Alright? How about C? It is the same as B. You can do that. So times 2 only. Alright? So your IX in the calculator. Remember all these units are in all these are in millimeter. Okay? So your IX will be 3.28 as only 3.8 to 8 10 power of 8 millimeter power of 4. Alright? This is your IX. It's it is pretty straightforward because the reason is because for all these areas that you chose, uh, the centroids, their centroids, lie on the x axis itself. And you want to find this I x, okay? But for i y, okay, this is the, the thing. For i y, it will be a bit tricky, okay? It's not that it's not that too difficult, but it will be just somewhat slightly different. Right? The reason is because okay, let's do for the i y. This is y, okay. See, this is y. So for a, what is the base? Is it this or this? Okay. If you do i y for a, the base is this. Like I said, the base is the one base is the one which is parallel to the axis you want to find moment of the shadow about. Right. So for i y. For this area A, it is 1 over 12, same, B H cubic. So the base, but now the base is this, which is 200, plus 50, plus 200, which is 450 millimeter. Okay? And then the height is 50. 50 power of 3, okay? 1 over 12, B H cubic. Can you see that from this I Y for A, and I X for A, they are the inverse. I mean, this B now becomes this H. This B now, be, uh, this H becomes this B now, okay? Because this is this is for I X, this is for I Y, okay? Okay, this one is for A. How about B? And C the drawn. But B, how about B? So plus, same. It is one over twelve. Base is fifty, right? H is this, which is one fifty. 150 O of 3. Okay, so this one again, they will be the other way around. This is 1 over 12, B H cubic, right? This is the base, this is the height. But now, here, here for this is for X, for IY, it will be the other way around. Okay? I mean, same, 1 over 12 B H cubic, but the definition of your B and H depends on your axis that you choose. Right? You want to find more definition about this is for X, this is your B, this is your H. For IY, this is your B, this is your H, the other way around. Okay? Okay, but for I Y for B, it's not just this. Why? The reason is because the centroid of B is here. You want to find moment of inertia I Y about this. Why is here, right? So you remember the parallel axis theorem. So this is the this one is actually. You want to find one inertia about this axis. Okay? They call it like y prime. Right? So if you want to find the moment inertia about the another axis, for instance this y axis, so what you need to do is you have to plus a b squared. Do you remember that one in parallelic theorem? Right? So what is your a? Okay. What is your a? A is area simple, so it is. 150 times 50. Alright? 150 times 50. Area. 150 times 50. Area. Okay, simple. How about oh, sorry, d squared? What how about d? D is the distance between the centroid of this area, which is B, right? That you have with this the axis that you want to find one of the In this case is y axis. So how much is this distance? 
Mm. Of course, this is 150, so this is 75, isn't it? Half of that, 75. This is 50, this is 25. So 75 uh, plus 25, it is 100. Right? So it is, uh, let's put like this, plus 150 uh, times 50, okay, for the area. How about the D? 75, right? Half of this, plus half of this, 25. So 75 plus 25. Actually, it's 100, but I just want to make sure that you really understand this. Okay? So, for B, the, uh, the, to find the moment of inertia of B with respect to what exists, first is the moment of inertia itself, what is all centrally exists, okay? 1 over 10 meters cubic. And then you need to plus A area times the distance between the centroid to the axis you want to find the moment of inertia of Right? So this is for B. How about C? So C will be the same. I mean, just do it. You will have the same thing here. And then you just, because it's the same thing, just times 2. Okay? Okay, so if you calculate, then you will end up with IY equals to 182 0.8 times the power of 6 millimeter power of 4. Right, so your ix is this 3.8 and power 6, iy is 182.8, then power of. Okay, just a side note. It's not in statics, but it's just a side note. Uh, can you see that actually the ix and iy are different, right? Because of the different shape. Can you see that? In y, you have 200, 50, 200, roughly, right? In x, you have 150, 50, 105. 150, sorry. So, roughly, that's the reason why, actually, can you see that your IY is bigger than IX? Right? So, uh, though it surely it's not in statics, the implication is, about Y exists, this cross-section is stiffer. Right? Stiffer, it doesn't deform that much. Let, let's put that way, as simple as that. For now, okay? For now. 